Hello and welcome to our online service today. We are scattered in our different homes, but we can still come together to worship in this way. And it's good to do that. I want to thank once again all the contributors to this service today. And as we begin, I also want to mention our weekly email news being sent out by Debs. If you're not yet receiving that and would like to, please do get in touch with Debs so that we can add you to the list and keep in touch. Those weekly emails also contain details of how you can give to the work of the parish and we'd encourage you to do that if you're able to. Now, under more normal times, this would have been a Christian Aid Week service for us. And so there will be a few words about Christian Aid Week uh, from Angela Salter later on in the service. But we begin by coming to God in praise and worship. Psalm 19 says this, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. So we come now to sing praises to our God, who is great, and mighty and powerful. So we take a few moments now to come to God who loves us in confession for our sins, trusting in his mercy and grace. In a dark and disfigured world, 
when we have not held out the light of life. Lord, have mercy. In a hungry and hurting world, when we have failed to share our bread, Christ, have mercy. In a cold and loveless world, when we have kept the love of God to ourselves, Lord, have mercy. And may God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Don't look so worried. Don't panic. God will help you. Trust him and trust in me and what I'm telling you. In my father's house, there are many rooms and there is one for each of you. I wouldn't tell you that if it were not true. That's why I have to leave you so that I can go and prepare those rooms for you. Then when all is ready, I will come back and take you home. You know where that is, don't you? Yes, Lord. Absolutely. I don't. What? I don't know what you're talking about. And I bet these others don't either. Do you, Peter? Well... We have no idea where you're going, so how can we follow you? Speak plainly, please, Jesus. I will for you, Thomas. You're looking for the way? Yes! Well, 
I am the way. I am the way and the truth and the life. I'm going to my father soon. And if anyone else should want to come to my father too, then they must follow me, listen to me and obey me, live as I have lived. If you have really known me, then you will know the father too. Show us the father, Lord, please, just show us him now. Haven't you seen him all along? Have you looked at me and missed him all these months together? And you still don't recognize God at work? The words I've said, the things I've done, they're not my own. I am part of the Father, and the Father is part of me, intertwined. Search for God and look to me. If you'll only believe this, you will do much greater things than I've been doing. Ask anything in my name, and if it brings glory to God, I will do it for you. Lord, if you go away, as you say you will, how will we cope? We'll fall apart without you. We can't stay in the same room ten minutes without arguing. God will send you help, Thomas. An advisor, a comforter, a guide for the way ahead. Another man? No. His own presence working within you. His Holy Spirit. Soon. I will disappear from the world, and people will be ignorant of God. They will look for him, but they won't find him. Instead, they will find you, and you will know what to do, because you will have the Spirit of God living in you. But why can't you just stay with us? Because I am one man. I can't go all over the world at one time. You can. You and the millions of others whom God touches. It's much better for me to go away, because that will release God's power. In all of your lives, like the seed in the ground, it will multiply again and again, until people everywhere have the opportunity to know my Father. Lord, isn't there some way you could just show yourself to the whole world? No, John. That was never the plan. You are to show me to the world. Us? But will people just laugh? Yes, they will. But when you meet people who will listen, you'll find yourself recalling everything I've said to you. Then no one will laugh. Many will listen, and some will even obey. I hope so, Lord. Trust me. Don't be worried. It'll happen. I'm going to leave you one other thing, the gift of peace. Not dreamy tranquility, but literal calm, order among the chaos. Come on, we must go. The time is short, and we must head back to the Mount of Olives. The reading is taken from the Gospel according to St John, chapter 14, verses 6 to 14. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? even after I have been among you such a long time. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. 
You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. The church calendar is approaching rogation tide, so I thought it might be appropriate to start this uh, video by me walking around the edge of the garden, beating the bounds of the garden, uh, you might say. Exactly what our ancestors did when they were doing this, well, is debated. Some say they were beating out the evil from the parish. Others would say they were simply asking God's blessing on the fields, on the crops, that there would be a good harvest that year. Well, it seems to have fallen out of favour uh, in the church, beating the bounds, that is. And indeed, the idea of rogation tide. But uh, nowadays there seems to be an alternative that has uh, come into the church in recent years, prayer walking, where people walk around their neighbourhoods praying as they go. And maybe that's something we could all be doing while we are in lockdown, when we go out for our daily exercise, praying for the homes, the businesses that we pass on our way. Let us saturate our town with prayer and with blessing at this time. Rogation has its origins in the Latin word regare, which means to ask. And the traditional gospel reading for uh, Rogation Sunday was John 16, 23 to 33, which in its opening verse, Jesus says, My Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. In our reading, gospel reading today, uh, again from the farewell discourse of Jesus, we hear him say, I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Well, this is a mighty impressive promise, but what does it mean? And was it just for those first disciples, or is it for us, for all Christians at all times? Just a couple of days ago, we celebrated a victory in Europe Day, the 75th anniversary. Reading the accounts and watching uh, the newsreels uh, of the actual day, you can sense the relief that there was, the joy that this brutal conflict was over, at least in Europe. However, behind the, those scenes, there would have been much heartache as mothers mourn the loss of their children, as husband and wives mourn their spouses, children, their parents. Many of them, I'm sure, would have been asking God why their loved ones had not come home. Many of them would have been praying during the war to look after their loved ones, their families, whilst they were away. And many would be left saying to Jesus, I asked faithfully in your name, but you didn't give me that for which I asked. It has to be said, sometimes there are no easy answers and sometimes not complicated ones either. So what does Jesus mean when he says he will give us what we ask for? Well, You'll have heard me say on many an occasion, when you have a difficult or a mystifying passage in the Bible, look at the wider context to see how it is set. This always helps. For today's reading, it starts with Jesus talking about needing to go to prepare a place for his disciples. He talks of there being many rooms in his father's house and going to prepare a place for them. Then he talks of coming back to accompany them to the place, this place, so that they can be where the Father and he are. The only way to his Father is through him, through Jesus. The thing to note here is that Jesus is talking in, et in an eternal context, not just of the immediate world around. This, I believe, is of the utmost importance when we begin to think about the teaching that follows. Jesus is looking through the lens of the suffering of the cross to the glories of resurrection and ascension to heaven. And so must we. Over the past hundred years or so, belief in God and church going in particular has declined in the Western world. 
two of the major causes uh, of this are the destruction caused and death caused by the two world wars. And then following these, the increased wealth, sophistication and comfort of the latter part of the 20th century uh, and now the 21st century. Many are saying that the present coronavirus epidemic is a wake-up call to jolt us out of the complacency that has grown. Well, I'll leave you to decide if you think that's so. But by and large, the modern mindset, which has affected us all, even in our churches, has our eyes focused more on the things of the world rather than the larger uh, it, uh, perspective of eternity? A broad and sweeping statement, I know, but how many of us would have the faith of the first disciples of the early church to leave everything and follow Jesus, accepting whatever came our way? The second reading for today, which we uh, didn't have, was the martyrdom of Stephen, the stoning of Stephen. And certainly the lot of the early Christians was uh, often persecution, sometimes martyrdom. Would we willingly accept that? In the context of eternity, the world looks a very different place. We will have different values, different morals, a different outlook on life. We will find ourselves out of step with the majority of people around because we follow Jesus, who, as he says, is the way, the truth and the life. For the early church, it didn't matter what happened to them because they knew that Jesus was the way to the Heavenly Father and that, in the greater scheme of things, meant that all would be well. In a recent Church Times article, Faith That Finds Life in Death, Martin Bashir, the BBC correspondent, writes of how Christians in the Roman Empire were the only ones to care for plague victims who had been abandoned by their families, heedless of any danger to, them, to themselves. Did all of the above mean that the only thing that they would earnestly ask of Jesus is that he would be there for them at the end of their earthly life to lead them to the Father in heaven? I somehow doubt it, but it is only in an, ex an, in an eternal context that I can make sense of Jesus saying, I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. And it is only in an eternal context that I can make sense of a God, a God of love watching over some of the atrocities and the random acts of violence and horrific incidents in our world as we know it. I do believe Jesus wants us to lift all things to him in prayer. I also believe that prayer is an immensely powerful and influential thing, both in the church and the world. Prayer is entering into the eternal mysteries of heaven and earth. But it is not magic, and we do not control God through our prayers. We simply put ourselves at God's disposal and seek his will, remembering we live in a fallen world. So let us seek his will and be bold in doing it to the glory of God the Father. And in so doing, let us open our eyes to the eternal splendours of heaven and earth. Amen. And one final say, there is a fuller version of this sermon uh, available online or through the parish office. Also, as something a little different, I'll be leading a discussion tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Uh, if you would like to join me for that, please do email me or you may have already received a link through the parish office. So please do join me for that. Lord, we give thanks for the opportunity to worship together as we ask for God's blessing upon our world and our town and for all who live, work, govern and direct it. Since lockdown, I have been reminded of the parable of the fig tree, which the Reverend Michael Young talked about on the third Sunday of Lent. It tells how Jesus shows how fruitful God is, as he gives chance after chance to respond to his outreach of love and challenges us 
and give us a second chance to put right all the wrongs committed by ourselves and by our world and its leaders. It reminds us that none of us are perfect, but we are all given a second chance. So, Father, we pray today for a second chance for our world, for its leaders, for the opportunity to put right all the wrongs committed by greed, status and power. To allow our world to breathe once again, the fresh, clean air of unpolluted life in all directions. We have been given this second chance to live with our neighbours, sharing all that we have and giving freely to others of our worth and helping others in their times of need without seeking the costs. Lord, we pray that once this time of lockdown ceases, may we, your servants, continue to live in this way, sharing and caring for our world and our communities to make our world a better place. Dear Lord, thank you for the town in which we live and for all the facilities it offers. As we celebrate the 75th anniversary of VE Day, we give thanks for all its well-known residents who fought for our freedom and for the quiet ones who by their jobs or voluntary work help to make our town a wonderful place to live. Show us how to be worthy successors of those who lived in past times so that we may hand on our heritage to those who will come after us. <coughs> we pray and give thanks for all those who staff our hospitals, care homes, medical centres and schools, for the police, ambulance, fire services and armed forces on which we all rely and for all frontline workers in every capacity. Grant them patience and skill. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown as you have helped his people and continue to help them. Lord, you have taught us that there is a time to speak and a time to keep silent. Make us ready to listen to your voice and ready to listen to other people who need a sympathetic ear. Bringing before you, Lord, all those who are ill at this time and have asked for our prayers. And naming in the silence all who have lost loved ones. Teach us humility, wisdom and love. Let us pray for all families, for our loved ones from whom we are separated by distance or death, for a deepening love, deepening love towards others in our all relationships. Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, we entrust to your loving care the members of our families. Supply their needs, guide their footsteps, keep them in safety of body and soul, and may your peace rest upon our homes, our time, and our country, and upon our dear ones everywhere. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Usually we would have had the United Christian Aid service at Lady St Mary Church today, However, because of lockdown, of course, this is impossible. I want to thank you for all that you have done over many years to raise money for Christian Aid, where people have been around all the houses in Wareham and Sanford with the red envelopes, collecting money from the local population who have been glad to take part in what has become in the UK the biggest house to house collection. This year we had already decided not to do the house to house as there are fewer able bodied people in the church able to do this but in fact it would have been impossible anyway due to the lockdown. 
Thank you to those who have raised money over many years. We raised 4,000 last year and going back 20 years this was about 8,000 each year. You can still give to Christian Aid going on the website which is www.christianaid.org.uk Many thanks for all of your help. This is a prayer for today's Christian Aid Week. God who speaks through unexpected people we thank you for contemporary prophets who are challenging us to act on climate change, for indigenous people and their invaluable knowledge of the land and sea where they live, for scientists dedicating their careers to warning us about changes to the planet, and for young people striking for their future. We pray that you will help those in power to hear their prophetic voices, help them to see beyond short-term political priorities and business plans, and give them wisdom and courage when they face difficult decisions. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of second chances, we recognise the damage we have done to the earth and the injustice we see in society every day, all of it fuelled by worship of profit and possessions. We pray for the coming of a better world with justice, kindness and humility at its heart. We ask that you guide us to be co-creators of this new world, Give us confidence to follow the prophetic voices, to stand together against injustice to people and to planet, so that together in your strength we stop the climate crisis. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
So we finish with a prayer of blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you know and love, now and always. Amen.